Hey, this is Andrew here with AS Movies and Games at ArcticSunburn.com. That's A R C T I C Sunburn.com. And this is day two in the Game of Day campaign. And if you'd like to check out the Max DaCosta drawing, this is what we're all rallying around. This is the reason we're doing daily podcast episodes right now, is to let you know about this drawing that we've put up on eBay as an auction. And so it was inspired by the movie Elysium and the character Max DaCosta, the main protagonist from it. And we did a little bit of a drawing that went along with our review of the movie. And that's what we're now auctioning off. So go to the website and check that out. If you just go to arcticsunburn.com and then click on the button reading promotions, that should take you to the page where you can learn more about it. So in today, in this episode of the podcast, I want to talk about Robo Warrior, which is the North American title for it. In Japan, it's actually known as Bomber King. Bomber King... I the reason I want to talk about this it's kind of a neat game and you know initially I think they were thinking of doing some kind of sequel to Bomberman and it eventually ended up becoming its own entity so that's why the need to change it and uh, I don't hate either title I think both the English or the Japanese title work pretty well again the English title being Robo Warrior and then the Japanese title being Bomber King what it I don't know what it is about this game that that appeals. I guess part of it is that it's it's sort of difficult and it can be a party game where if you can get really far in it, it can be bragging rights for your friends and you know after completing a few levels and however long that takes, there's like a boss battle, right? So you go and do the boss battle, and I'm sure people that have played it or only played it for a little bit would go, what? There's a boss in this game? And so I think it makes for sort of a good uh, bragging rights sort of game. But I guess the other part of it for me is, like, I see potential in games sometimes, and this is one of those where it's maybe a little bit too hard in some ways, a little bit too a little bit too monotonous in other ways. I just see tremendous room for improvement. There are so many ways to make this game better and into something newer. In fact, I actually went searching on my phone to see if there was some kind of sequel to this game or just if there was some kind of app development that was similar to this game and I couldn't find anything similar to it. So that should tell you something. Like, I wanted to go and play this on my phone, you know, let alone my my Famicom or my AV Famicom, which I, which I did play there for quite a while. And I've beaten the game before because I reviewed it on the website and you'll be able to find that in the show notes if you go to the website. But, uh, it was, uh, the only reason I was able to do it was with save states. If I didn't have save states, I'm pretty sure I would not have been able to get through the whole game. So I've gotten to the point now where I'm a little more practiced up and I can make it to a certain point. I don't know if it was like level 3-2 or something like that, uh, which is not easy to do by any means. But uh, because of the difficulty of the game, like if you place bombs, which is part of the whole game mechanic, you need to place bombs to blow up trees to create a passage for yourself. Well if you so much as touch the bomb, usually you're dead. Not every time, but almost every time in this game, if you hit a bomb, you're dead. So a lot of the time, like your, your greatest enemy aren't the little, little guys wandering the map that you can shoot and kill. It's oftentimes yourself. If you don't play it well and you don't get away from your bomb in time or you end up placing too many bombs by accident, you can pretty easily kill yourself. Now, there is one enemy in the game that's often pretty dangerous, and they'll shoot missiles at you. But aside from that, it's pretty straightforward. And then part of it is just finding the the exit key. So a lot of times you can't uh, leave a level without having fulfilled certain conditions. And that's part of what makes the game interesting, but also frustrating if you have no idea. I would say there are certain maybe quote-unquote secrets or or walls that you can blow up that you need to know about so that you can get certain items and if you don't have those items 
I think there's like a lantern or something like that. And there's levels that are completely dark. So you need the lantern to be able to light the level. Then you're kind of screwed. So that's another aspect of this whole game. I'd say, you know, if I were to create my own game at some point in, in a future development, I'd love to create an improved version of this game. And I guess that's partly why I'm talking about it right now. It's definitely not the best game ever, but it could be so much better. And maybe that's part of what makes it fascinating. Well, in any case, that's my review for today. So join me tomorrow for another Game of Day review.